and welcome back. Now, I bought this um, speed fan controller a, a long time ago now, for over a month, six weeks, um, directly from China via eBay, because I need to control my fan in my workshop. Uh, because, well, basically, it does get rather warm in here in the summer. So I have a fan for the summer, and also in the winter it circulates the, um, the nice warm air across, right? So the fan is that big black thing you see in there in that little window, and it, and it works wonderfully well. But it does need a speed controller on it, um, which you can see here. It's this little tiny mains one, um, plug-in though. And I'm fed up having to keep getting up from my workbench where I'm sitting right now, uh, filming this, and having to adjust it, okay? So I thought, I know, I can get something closer to where I'm sitting and screw it in. And this seemed to fit the bill because you can see it's a nice metal case. It's got these, these screw holes on the side. We can slot it into, um, you know, a panel or something. My workbench wall, basically. And I thought, yeah, okay, but... I'll just just hold your horses there a minute. As you know, buying anything that um, revolves around mains voltage from the Far East is, well, potentially a death trap. And this is no exception, I can assure you. Now, I did buy this, though, with my eyes wide open. Having looked at the, um, the pictures on eBay, I thought, hmm, I can see some changes that are going to have to be done to that. But even though you might be thinking, well, why on earth did you buy it then? If you knew it was so dangerous, potentially dangerous, why on earth did you go and buy this rather than something else? And the answer was, I couldn't find anything else that met my needs exactly. So after a long struggle and looking around for several weeks, I might add on and off, you know, it's that background task that never gets done. I thought, look, let's just go and buy this, stick it on the wall, and it's done. Well, as you can see, it's, it's not yet stuck on the wall because uh, as soon as I saw this, I thought, hmm, there's work needs to be done on this, which I knew. I know I'll show my viewers so that they're aware of the sort of things that happen uh, when you get stuff from China or the Far East, not just China, of course. So let's have a look at the um, the browser listing first, just, just, just so you can see uh, what it is I bought. So this here, now funnily enough, I didn't pay that. Um, this has changed, in fact, a little bit. If Let me go back to the, uh, the main picture. There we are. Um, now on this one, you can see here, see that... Um, the switch, the red rocker switch. I'm trying to point to it with my mouse there, but the big picture shows it better. I haven't got that on mine. If you look at my one, so it's just got that little little on-off switch there. So obviously they've changed it, and uh, in use that as an ex as an excuse really to put the price up. I paid something like sixteen pound fifty, which I still think was quite a lot. And um, I I knew there were things wrong with it because when I looked at I think it was, no, it couldn't have been that picture, but there's, there's somewhere there was a picture, possibly that one. No, it wasn't that one either. But I knew that this device had a mains cable going into it, but I thought, hmm, that doesn't look like it's earthed. And this is a, um, well, a European style plug. And normally you'd have an earthing sort of, well, a bit in, in here or in here or potentially both so we call these shuko plugs in the uk but in the u in the um european area well i know them from germany that's all i know them from um they're they're very common now obviously there's no earth on here so i think hmm no earth and yet this is a metal case well the only time you can have that is if it's all double insulated and there's no chance of the mains ever touching this case and i thought hmm right i'll what i'll do is change this cable then for a three core cable so you got live neutral and an earth with a proper uk plug on it fused because this is not fused okay and uh, just just whack it in the back because it's it's pretty easy i think to uh, put it through there and uh, i don't know how many screws are there. there's a screw there and another screw the other side okay there's a couple on the front here probably have to take this potentiometer knob off maybe i know i thought well okay well we'll do all that um in real time sort of real time um on my workbench so that's exactly what i'm going to do next i'm going to take this apart and then we can just have a look to see how easy <laughs> or hard who knows it's probably going to be hard isn't it to change that cable and make it safer and i know that i'm going to be put on the naughty step for even talking about mains electronics type things but i think it's going to be worth it and i was fascinated by this um, this red display as well because that's going to display the voltage so hmm i don't want to actually plug it in quite yet though let's let's um, have a look inside first shall we okay i've taken those um, four screws out so i thought i'd just oh 
hang on let's not lose those just take it apart if you like live on there oh dear don't worry i can always cut out the boring bits if i can't get the thing apart uh oh, it's sort of coming apart oh there we are it's just the wire coming through right so as we already knew let me just pull this through a little bit right there we are a bit of room to play so as we knew already um all it is is a live and neutral uh, wire no earth even though this is a metal cable and i think that should be earth most definitely um there's the little um red switch not switch the red um, indicator that we're gonna have a look at in a sec um, that's the switch oh that's the socket so that's just soldered on doesn't look doesn't look s hmm. i can't say i'm i'm impressed with the soldering on that if you are going to solder a socket at least put some decent solder on it after all this could be this is rated i think for the full 13 amps that's the maximum you can take out of a uk socket um, there's the switch on off switch that's sort of okay and then there's oh yes i didn't need to take that um that knob off because that's sort of all part of this control bit now the interesting thing is that uh, the description said um, this is a thyristor controlled fan speed item and i think thyristor how can that be true what what terminology have you now got muddled up with because as you know a thyristor cannot control ac mains voltage not in the way we want to do it anyway you didn't know let's just have a little quick um, interruption in on the whiteboard after this very special message from my sponsor this week i want to give a shout out to pcb way pcb prototype the easy way just enter the dimensions of your pcb choose the number of pcbs you want and the layers and hit the quote now button now heads up guys the voting for the third pcb design contest has already started the range of submissions has to be seen to be believed everything you could ever think of on a pcb look over them select your favorites and get voting now they depend on you so get voting and have a look at the pcb way website and try them out today right let's have a, a 60 second recap on thyristor which is what they maintain this is uh, versus a triac which is what you really need to control mains voltage right let's have a look at that first now the first thing to do is to draw the symbols for both and they, they they're different and you'll see how obviously the thyristor the one i'm drawing at the moment cannot possibly be used for ac current this is the gate that's the anode and that's the cathode it's a bit like a diode with a gate okay the triac on the other hand looks quite different now if you can imagine two diodes sort of back to front really one point in that way one point in that way um, they're sort of joined and there's a gate as well so there's a gate now this isn't anode and cathode because obviously you know they're reverse diodes pointing at each other so we've got anode one and anode two now the major difference why that that fan controller thing can't possibly be a thyristor is because when the thyristor conducts on an ac wave let's just draw a nice little ac wave here so imagine that's you know mains coming in or something like that um, the thyristor just like a diode can only conduct this bit of the wave when it gets to this zero point here it stops conducting ignores all this and then only starts conducting again when it reaches the next half wave so it'll conduct this bit so there's going to be a big gap here and it'll only ever conduct half of the cycles the, the positive cycle halves the triac on the other hand uh, has absolutely no trouble in um, conducting each part of this wave as long as there's gate current present um, what happens with the triac is you switch it on with the gate current once it reaches the minimum gate current yes this starts conducting very nicely thank you very much so all that gets put off when it hits zero though the zero voltage it automatically switches off the same as the thyristor does but as long as there's gate current present it will continue to conduct this bit here so this is undoubtedly what's being used in that uh, speed controller that i've got yeah so not not this one at all I'm talking rubbish aren't they so the question is how does dimming and speed control work then when we're using a triac so we have our triac here with the anodes connected one perhaps to live and the other one to your load so whatever it is you're trying to control here whether it's a bulb or a motor or whatever so that's possibly neutral and that one there is your line and here is a gate current that you're inputting here from another part of the circuit 
So what happens is with your when you have your wave form like this that would normally conduct as long as there's gate current present, if we don't apply the gate current until later in the cycle, say here, so it will not conduct at this point, it will only conduct when there's gate current present, that's when it starts conducting. And ditto, once it's hit the zero line, if we have taken away the gate current by then and apply it later, it will conduct there. The resultant cycle is not a nice smooth one. It suddenly goes up and does a bit, then it ignores the rest of that and suddenly drops down and does that. So you get this funny cut off sine wave and that will, well, either dim or speed control, whatever it is you want to do. Okay, I think we've sort of got that sorted now. Right, back to taking this apart then. Um, so we've got this this board here, which I think you can pretty much see. Oh, ooh, that's, that's Now you see, this is what I mean. This is dangerously close. Look, look how this board here, let me get my pointer. This board um, has got the pot on it, but look how close all these connections and things are. In fact, this board, I think, is it's touching this case. So I don't know what the... Um, what the printer circuit underneath looks like but that is a surefire recipe for disaster tell you what i'm going to take this this th it looks like this pot is the only thing holding this the circuit board onto the chassis so i'm going to take this uh, the knob off and take the nut off and remove this and i think we'll have a better view of what's going on here but this this worries me a little bit now even before i start taking that uh, nut off this pot that's half the reason why this thing is so close to the front panel. What they should have done is put two nuts on here, one inside and one on the outside. So this whole unit could be moved further back. It would hold it back, you see, from the front panel. But they've decided to screw the thing up tight, and that's what brings that front panel so dangerously close to the metal chassis. Anyway, let me get it off. Okay, let's see if we can get that out without disrupting too many wires so what have we got here then oh look at these these connections are dangerously close to the front panel and um, all this all this is going to be live you know connected to your household mains so if th any of these came into contact with this metal panel and then I touched it well, not just me anybody um, that could be a recipe for disaster frankly so Hmm. Okay, so what they got then? They got this triac bolted to this lump of aluminium, a potentiometer, a resistor, capacitor. That looks like another capacitor down there. There must be something else because yeah, something's going to control it. I don't know what the brains of it is. You think there'd be some kind of um, oscillator somewhere that generates the pulses to the triac? to turn it on compared to what this is. Well, maybe there's something hidden in there. Oh, there's something, something that, oh, that's a resistor. Oh, well, I'm not really too bothered about that. We'll, we'll perhaps um, test it out when I put this back together again. But you can see what the problems are. One, there's no earth on this mains wire coming in, which means the chassis is not earth. Therefore, if any of this went wrong and shorted to the mains panel, nothing would happen bad necessarily until you touched it and then of course you're connected to the mains of your household so that's definitely a no-no that should definitely be earthed properly and if you when you earth a panel like this you've got to scrape away all this black epoxy stuff and um, you know make sure you're actually connecting to the bare metal and soldering to that is very difficult so you'd probably have to put a bolt in or something not some half ass screw you know that you often find in these little things that wouldn't take anything it's got to be done properly because this is a this could potentially be controlling the heater of my workshop. I'm not going to ever do that. That's the other thing that I knew I wasn't going to do. I'm going to control just that little fan. It's only a 40 watt fan, but even so. All right, what I'm going to do is put it back to, um, together now and uh, we'll see how it works. You see that it says thyristor? No, never in a million years is that a thyristor. We'll have, we'll have a look at it and try it out, I think. Cool. Now, in order to test this with this funny Shuko plug on it, I obviously need an adapter, so I'm using this. Um, also probably not rated for the full 15 amps or 13 amps, whatever it says this can take. So this is all, it's just compounding the errors, isn't it? Um, the other thing I didn't like was this pot, if you notice, has got a metal spindle. Um, I would have liked to see a plastic spindle or something that's connected to mains potential. 
so yeah, I might um, I might consider changing that. Although yes, there is a certain amount of protection from the actual knob itself because that's plastic. Um, I'll have to think about that. I think really, but um, yeah, I was um, fascinated with this though. Um, I want to see how well that works because um, there's something I've got that um, is very similar actually, and I've been meaning to show you. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Stand well back. Now it's going to be difficult to get a good shot of this. I've, I've put my Honeywell fan plugged in, right? That's only a 40 watt fan, it's not a huge load on this. And it's got a short cable because obviously it's tailored to my workshop. But uh, now you can see it says 135 at about the two o'clock mark, so we can turn it up. And you can probably hear the noise of the fan. Right, I've angled the fan away from the microphone. So 233, let's bring that back down again. Okay, it's now at least giving us an indication of what it thinks it's outputting as voltage, which is also, quite frankly, a bit of nonsense because it's not actually reducing the voltage, is it? It's probably reducing the cycle of each individual AC uh, cycle that's coming out. So it's just chopping it up, basically. Um, so when it says 149, it's probably averaging that out difficult to know exactly what it's doing. Oh, did you see that? It's gone from lit. So the, the numbers there are lit. And if I turn it down a bit more, oh, it, it can't light it up anymore. 19. And when does that go off then? Yeah, I think we've sort of reached the limit really on 19. That's the lowest it can go. Is it going to come back on? Perhaps I've broken it. Oh, no, there it is. It's quite far up though, isn't it? Look, it's about the one o'clock mark before it comes up. And of course my fan only starts turning now. So, yeah, okay. But for what I want, you see, you're probably thinking again, why on earth did you buy that if it doesn't work? Well, it does work because my fan's on now and I can control it nicely, um, especially with the warm weather coming up in the summer. What's that, UK, warm weather? Yeah, I know, funny, isn't it? But this week it's supposed to be quite warm. So, all right, it works. Yeah, and it does sort of display something. I'm not quite sure what that is displaying, but I've got something that does work, and it's even better than that, that thing there. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Right, so a long time ago, I bought this. It's a digital panel light, because I saw it advertised in the magazine. He said, you know, for the small amount it costs, I can't remember what it was now, two quid or something. And I thought, mm, OK, I'll buy one then, and we'll see how it goes. And um, the... The reason I'm getting this out is because it looks amazingly similar to that one at the back there, doesn't it? Except this has two displays on it. I've still got the, the protective plastic on there, but um, you can probably just about make out. So what it displays actually is volts on the top and amps down the bottom. And the way it does that is, um, first of all, it's got the screw terminals at the back there, which you can just put in your mains voltage or whatever voltage it is you're trying to measure in the normal way, like that one at the back does. But it also gives you this, this little harness thing that goes onto this. So these two join together and you put whatever you're trying to measure through this ferrite ring. Just one, just one of the cables, basically the line cable live, 240 volts through here. And that will measure the current so I'm tempted to um, put something through that and just see what it does measure. But I, I'm, once again, though, we don't want to measure like, you know, 10 milliamps or 100 milliamps. We want to measure 5 amps or 8 amps, so like a kettle or something. But you can only put one wire through here. I wonder if it says that in the instructions. Hmm. Well, the instructions sort of, well, don't really indicate anything. I suppose... If this is live and this is neutral, it's just showing the one wire going through. You have to have just the single wire, otherwise the the magnetic field, which is what it's measuring, would cancel each other out. So it's a little bit tricky. It's all right for installing it into your own installation while you're doing it, but I can't just unplug something now and plug plug something else into here without, you know, splitting the wire or something, the cable. Hmm. Okay, wired up, as safe as I can be. So if you see down here that ferrite ring we just looked at, this brown wire going round there is in fact to this extension uh, lead over here, right, into which I've plugged that heater, my workshop heater. 
That's right, the one from video whatever where I had to actually replace the control unit with an Arduino, would you believe? Hmm, interesting, still works. So I plugged it in and as you can see, it says 243 volts, 242, that's nominal within the UK, but zero amps because I haven't turned the heater on yet. So let me turn the heater on. We're not going to run it for a long time because it's a very warm day today. It's 24 degrees centigrade outside, 29 degrees here in my workshop and I'm about to turn on the heater. I must be mad, the things I do for you. Anyway, stand back in case there's any flashes. I don't want anything coming down the line towards you. So I'm going to um, turn my heater on now. There it goes. 4.4 amps, it says. Cool. Well, that's about right, isn't it? Because uh, I think it's a one kilowatt heater. Oh, it smells. All that dust in it. You see all that dust? hasn't been switched on for a long time now. So there we are. Now, if I turn the uh, rotating fan on as well, does it go up at all? Ooh. Oh, that's the 1500 now. So when it goes around like that, look, 7.2 amps. Oh, that's pretty neat. I like I like this switch. I've got to say, I like this. This well, It's not a switch. It's just an indicator. I like this indicator better than like that, I must admit. Right, let me turn it off. Whew, gosh, it's, oh, it's warm in here. So I like this, and for the, the small amount of money that it costs, which um, I'll show you, there it is, that's how much I paid for it, from Banggood, I hope they still got it. Anyway, links down in the uh, video description if you're interested. I'm almost tempted to put this into this unit, but um, as I say, this unit here, although it's got a voltage indicator, is only going to be used for my fan. I wouldn't dare use it for anything else, I don't think, to be quite honest. And it'd be a little bit wasted, wouldn't it? But I'll have to think of a, a decent project for this. Obviously, it's got to be mains operated and take a reasonable amount of amps. You don't want to say half an amp. It's just a bit silly, isn't it? Something that varies quite a bit. But for the money that I paid, and I'm pretty sure it's cheap, um, I think it's, it's useful to have that. In fact, I'm going to look up exactly how much I paid for it. OK, I paid exactly £2.70, and they still sell them here. Look, in Banggood. Uh, there they are, all different colours. I chose red because, well, I don't know, I just like red as an indicator, but they obviously do lots more. Um, $4.06 to $6.91. I wonder why it's, oh, do they ship it from different places or are they more expensive depending on the colour? Ah, yes. So if they ship directly from the USA, it's obviously going to cost more, but then you haven't got the shipping. Is there shipping? Oh, yes. Shipping again. And you haven't got the delay either. So $4.06 from, from China. And the six dollars, whatever it said, from yeah, six dollars and ninety-one from the states. Oh, you can only get certain colours in the states. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, so if you want anything other than blue and white, white, hmm, be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, you'd have to get it from China, which is where I got mine from. And this was before lockdown, and everything. So it turned up in well less less than two weeks, ten days maybe. So these are all the range of the colours, which you can probably just see flashing on behind me. Green looks nice. The blue one looks almost white, but it is blue, I guess. Yellow, well, they all look pretty nice. And for $4.06, pence, I've got to work out how much that is in British money now, just a second. Right, it's £3.38 now, so it's actually gone up since I bought it. I think everything's gone up, hasn't it? Even from China, what with this lockdown. Any excuse, eh, to raise prices, I know. Yeah, as so I paid two seventy, and maybe it will come down to that, or maybe there'll be more off it says 20 percent off it but maybe i bought it when it's you know half price or something i don't know but i think as a as a current um measurer and a voltage measurer it could be quite useful in certain instances you know if you've got um you know a, a milling machine a lathe even a cnc um, router or um, a 3d printer all those things probably could make use of this quite nicely because as it says there look it measure up to 100 amps and um, well i'm measuring 240 volts ish but I guess, you know, depending on where you are in the States or the Europe, you measure slightly less. And I think, yeah, it looks nice. And um, I'm pleased with the construction of it as well. I must admit, it's, it's quite nice. I'm not going to go too near it because there's all wires hanging out the back. But um, yeah, it's quite nice and large. And it's got a, it mounts, incidentally, excuse my hand, uh, through a round hole with that, um, that retaining ring on there. So it's easy to mount. If you ever try to create a square hole in a chassis, you know, just know how difficult that can be. Right, um, back to this then, I think, we're just to sort of conclude what we've learned today. So what have we learned today about this particular unit? Well, one, don't buy it without your eyes wide open, because I knew what I was buying here. I knew this cable wasn't earth. I knew I'd have to redo that, but that's you know, a two minute job. Um, I didn't know that the control panel was going to be so close to this front panel here that it was dangerously close. So I'm going to have to put another nut on that 
pot or something at the back there, probably just a plastic spacer or something, just to keep the electronics away from here. Um, I'm going to have to re-solder or redo the back of this universal plug because I'm not happy with that. Because the trouble with solder, you see, if it overheats because you've plugged something in there that's a bit chunky, um, the solder can literally melt. The wire then flies off and touches the case. And yeah, OK, if it's earthed, it will just blow the fuse. But even so, it's just a bad design, isn't it? The switch was OK as far as I could tell. But uh, I might have another go at that. Nothing, of course, was shrouded in, in heat shrink or anything like that. So I'm just going to need to work this. But literally an hour's work and this will be ready to go, which means I can screw it onto the wall of my workshop somewhere here and run the, the wire back up to the fan. And that means I can then control it within arm's length of where I sit rather than keep getting up, walking up, finding out I haven't done it quite right, get up again. It, after a while, it does become wearing, believe me. It's not the exercise that I'm worried about. It's the constant up and down and tweaking it so I don't get a draft on the back of my neck. Right, okay, that's it. Now, um, I know this is mains, so if you do buy main stuff, do well, don't buy main stuff from China, one, okay, unless you really know what you're doing. <laughs> what am I doing buying it there from? Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go and stand on the naughty step then because I've talked about mains related items. Um, but this is this is okay, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. I, I believe I know what I'm doing. That will be safe, this device. So, yeah, I'll put a link in to where I got it from, but, you know, take that with a pinch of salt and be very careful. However, if you can find me a fan controller that is, you know, a screw onto the wall type thing and a plug in, but it doesn't have to be plug in. I could hardwire the fan directly into here. Um, do let me know before I get around to doing this. So, yeah, I'll leave it for a week or two in case any good comments come back. But it's got to be UK based, OK? Nothing from the Far East. We've been down that road now. Great. OK, that's enough for today. Enough waffling. Thanks very much for washing. washing. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you in the future video. Give me a thumbs up if you think it's worth it. Thank you. Bye now. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.